Thanks for joining us today at City Life. We believe today's message will empower you and point you towards Jesus. But remember that church is so much more than a message you listen to. It's a living, breathing community that we invite you to be a part of. We hope to see you on a Sunday morning at City Life, in person or online. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done. Pastors Mike and Monica started a new series called Greater Things. Uh, and last week, we celebrated our 30th anniversary, celebrating the great work that God has done. Yeah, it, has, it was a party. It was fun. Uh, and there's, you know, we've been, celebrated the good things that God has done, his faithfulness, uh, and his work in us so far. But also, just looked forward and believe that God is renewing faith in us to believe for the greater things that he is still doing, that he is still at work and he is still yet to do. And if you weren't here last week, we actually took some time and um, we gave everybody these little mini keys. And maybe you saw the door out in the foyer filled with keys and little tags. And this is one thing that we did to just remind ourselves to put our faith in God and to remember uh, maybe some of the things that we're individually praying for, individually believing God for, but then together we can stand and believe that God is going to do those greater things in us and through us as a church. And I, I think we ran out of keys. There might be a couple more, but we... Uh, whether or not you did that, there is a greater thing that I believe God wants for each and every one of us. And part of that is tied to us as a community, us together as a church. And we believe that nothing is too difficult for God. You know, sometimes we get hopeless. Sometimes we feel tired. Sometimes we might give up hope. But we believe that God invites us to pray invites us not to put our faith in an outcome, but to put our faith in him, to put our hope in him. And so we're just believing that God is reawakening faith to believe for signs and wonders and miracles in us together, in our gather times, that our time together on Sundays would be filled with the life and the presence and the power of God, and that we would see those miracles. In John 14, 12, Jesus told his disciples, he says, I tell you the truth that anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You know, we know the things that Jesus did when he was on the planet, when he was walking with the disciples, he healed people, he set people free, he shared the good news of God's rescue plan for humanity. He said everything that happened in God's history so far basically proved we can't do it on our own. No, the law wouldn't change them, the temple didn't change them, they needed something different. And so Jesus came. Uh, sharing God's rescue plan for humanity. And then he put it all into action by his death and his resurrection. He put it all into, into action. And so we, like we say every Sunday, we want to be with Jesus. We want to become like Jesus. And it's really through that being and becoming that we are filled with the Holy Spirit and able to carry out the mission of Jesus to our world. You know, so often, I think we fall into thinking, how cool would it be if the physical Jesus walked into the building? Like, how many of us would have faith that all of those, an those prayers would be answers, that people would walk out forgiven and healed and made whole and free? How many of us would just like, you know, there would be so much faith to believe for miracles if Jesus' physical presence came and was here with us? But yet, he said greater things would happen if he left. He said greater things would happen if the Holy Spirit could come and be with us instead. You know, Jesus said even greater works would be done because of what Jesus accomplished. He was then able to give us his spirit. He was able to give us the power not only to just try really hard like they did in the Old Testament, 
but to be transformed by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit with us. In John 16, you know, actually, Jesus, his final words to the disciples before he was arrested, before he was taken to be crucified, he spent time, and the, one of the greatest things that he taught his disciples was how much they needed the Holy Spirit. And he tried to explain it to them. He told them in many different ways about who the Holy Spirit was and what the Holy Spirit's purpose was. And in John 16, he says, In fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. The advocate is a, a name Jesus used for the Holy Spirit. But if I do go away, then I will send him to you. So Jesus said it's actually best for us that he would leave. That he would leave his disciples. That he would leave them with that mission of carrying on, carrying on what Jesus started. And so today I want to talk about the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about who the Holy Spirit is. Why Jesus said it might be better that the Holy Spirit is with us, and really look at the work of the Holy Spirit and how we can look to him for those greater things. Now, I know when I talk about the Holy Spirit, it might be a challenge for certain personality types or certain backgrounds and certain um, upbringings. You might have a specific um, lens that you might view the Holy Spirit through. But in 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says that the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he's not able to understand them, because they're spiritually discerned. You know, we need God's Spirit to reveal his truth to us. We need his Spirit to reveal the truth of the Holy Spirit in order for us to be able to even understand it because our natural minds will have hang-ups when it comes to things that our natural minds can't understand. You know, there are some things about being a Christ follower I think that just make sense. I believe that the way Jesus defined reality are... Like, there's just certain things that it's like, yes, absolutely, that is so true. It's such an easy thing to grasp, things that make sense, things that can be studied and explained. But then there are certain things that need to be revealed by the Holy Spirit. There are certain things that only the Holy Spirit can teach us. And so as I speak, before I speak, I just want to pray. And would you just pray with me um, wherever you're at? Father, I thank you that you are here. God, that your presence and your power are here by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I ask that you would reveal the truth of who you are. That you would reveal the, the things of the spiritual, um, spiritual nature of your leading and your guiding. And the way that you want to be, be with us in such natural ways. Lord, would you reveal it? Because otherwise, we're just wasting our time. <laughs> Amen. And if you are here and you are not a Christ follower, I'm kind of giving some insider information. And so if you've ever wondered what makes these people so different, what makes them so unique, this is kind of the, the inside scoop, the secret as to what makes Christians so different than the world around us. So first of all, who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. It's part of the Trinity, um, but it's the Spirit of God. And all throughout the Bible, he would give, even in the Old Testament, he would give people power. Power to interpret dreams or to create, to craft, supernatural, physical strength, or wisdom, or leadership. He would come on people for a time to empower them for a specific task. But then God's Spirit uh, was given, Jesus breathed on his disciples. So he was released, he was given to them by Jesus, but then he, was inst he instructed them to go and wait for the filling and the empowering of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit appears throughout the Bible as wind or smoke or fire or even a dove. But all of these are just symbols. They're not what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is not nature. It's not forces of nature. The Holy Spirit is the personal presence and power of God. So Jesus said, don't go, 
he, so he gave them the mission. He said, you are going to carry this good news to every corner of the world, but don't go anywhere yet until you receive the Holy Spirit. You can't do this mission that I've given you on your own. And so he sent the Holy, or he sent them to wait. He said, you need a helper. You need the Holy Spirit. And he said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. You know, he, Jesus knew how essential the Holy Spirit was to the disciples, who after his death and um, how, how brokenhearted, how disillusioned, you know, how weak and fearful the disciples were. I actually think this is one of the most interesting things about how God chose to work. He chose to work through, like, simple people, like fishermen and tax collectors and sh shepherds and just regular people. These were not people with power or influence or education or a platform. They were regular people who were fearful and awkward and strange. And, you know, like they said things that then they later re really regretted. And, you know, they made mistakes. And those people were the ones that transformed, that took the message of what Christ had done and transformed the then known world. You know, these were not people with um, just uh, an agenda. It's like, we want our religion to get through. You know, they had a life transforming experience. And part of that happened with the power of the, of the Holy Spirit. They waited, 120 people waited. And each one of them was filled. I think this is so powerful. It wasn't just the 12 famous apostles who were filled with the Holy Spirit for Jesus stuff. It was 120 people. It says each one of them was filled with strength. It was filled with the Holy Spirit. It wasn't just the famous. It was the faithful. It was, they were filled with courage and boldness. They believed and waited. And they were filled with the promise of the Holy Spirit. You know, even Jesus, everything he did, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and enabled to do what he did. You know, Jesus came not only to deliver us from sin and death, but also to establish a pattern of how we need to live in cooperation with the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told us in John 15, 5, that apart from him, we can do nothing. And so these disciples went from fearful to faithful and able to stand strong on the testimony and what Jesus did in the face of persecution because they had received power. And I just finished personally reading the book of Acts and the whole book of Acts is really the story of the work of the Spirit and the start of the church and how the Holy Spirit filled these very regular people to do the greater works that even greater things than what Jesus had done. And so I, I just want to introduce you just a broad, you know, the Holy Spirit is mentioned like 800 times in the Bible. So just a broad overview of who the Holy Spirit is. He is the source of life. He breathes life into our soul. He draws people to change and be made right with God. He is our helper. We need to learn to rely on his help. He lifts our blindness and helps us understand the word of God. He is our guide, like a spiritual GPS system to help us make decisions, to give us direction in life. He is our comforter and our counselor. He provides strength and courage. He helps us to be his witnesses, to share his good news, not in our own words, but in the power of his spirit working through us. I love this. One speaker said that the Holy Spirit holds us together like a toothpick and a club sandwich. <laughs> when we make the Holy Spirit our center, he holds us together. You know, Paul encouraged us to keep in step with the Spirit. And as we do, he matures us and shapes our character by the power of the cross and by the work of the Spirit. He enables us to have faith for signs and wonders and miracle, miracles. And we believe that it is only the supernatural power and presence of God that can transform our very broken world. 
You know, we can't let our disappointments rewrite the Bible for us. We need truth from God's word to continue to give us wisdom, to rely on the Holy Spirit, to pray daily and keep trusting in him. He gives gifts. He gives specific gifts to each one of us, not just for the spiritual things that we do, not just for worship and preaching and teaching, but also for working and living and parenting. He gives us his spirit giftings for our everyday life. He also gives special gifts to build the church. And we believe these gifts are for today and encourage people. Use the gift that God has given you. He gives gifts like speaking in tongues, speaking in a heavenly language, wisdom and healing and prophecy. These are gifts that God has given us through the work of the Spirit, and they're for us. He gives us his Spirit, makes it possible for us to live out his purpose for us as a church. You know, it's only through his power that we can be unified and strengthened and able to do what he has called and created city life to do. Not just us as a bunch of individuals, but us together. So it is better, Jesus said, it's better that the Holy Spirit is with us than if Jesus was actually physically present in his body here today. You know, we just recently finished a series about recognizing the lies and deceptive ideas and the disordered desires of our world. And one of the greatest gifts that God has given us so that we can know the truth is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in this world. And the context of this verse is being able to recognize false teaching to recognize the lies. The spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in this world. You know, we have the Holy Spirit. If you have said yes to Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit living in us, with us all the time. We need the spirit of God to reveal life, to, or to breathe life into us, to reveal truth, to wake up our spirits that are tired and weary, and to transform the human heart. You know, even knowing I was going to speak today, um, this week, I was getting ready to prepare, and I just was really distracted all week, just really, flesh, uh, like, easily distracted from time to prepare and I just kept kind of putting it off and the other day I was start sitting down getting ready to prepare and I get a phone call and there's another there's a problem that came up that I needed to solve and I was like okay Holy Spirit I will think about you later and I need to focus on this problem and I just felt the Holy Spirit be like so is that how this works <laughs> it's kind of sarcastic <laughs> but very gentle and it's like is that really how you want to live is you want to figure out this problem on your own and I was like oh holy spirit (laughs) you know too often we try and take matters in our own hands I don't know about you but I definitely do I try and fix it on my own strength I did try and do it on my own and then I am struggling and I'm fearful and I'm you know anxious and gripped by fear you know when we try and do it on our own strength we will fail but the Holy Spirit wants to empower us, not only, for the, not only for the things that we would put in the spiritual category, but also for the problems to solve and the, and the choices we make and the day-to-day life. He wants to be involved in our daily, uh, our daily lives. And so I had to repent. I was like, Holy Spirit, help me to rethink the way that I think about you and the role that I let you have in my life to ask for his help, lean into his leading. You know, the Holy Spirit is not just who we go to when we have an impossible miracle that we need. He wants to be part of our natural, normal, everyday lives. You know, I want to talk to moms this morning because, you know, it's Mother's Day. (laughs) I have good news and I have bad news. So... The good news, or the bad news, I'll start with that, because this is something we probably all know. But... This is some of the stuff that nobody writes in a Mother's Day card. <laughs> Motherhood is draining. Sometimes it's lonely. Might not feel like we have the strength to invest into friendships or uh, we're doing it all on our own. Maybe you're a single parent and you feel lonely, you feel like you're the only one. 
And whether you're changing diapers or helping with math homework or driving your kids around to extracurriculars, juggling work and business and all of the things that come with parenting. You know, there is, there's so much human wisdom that says you just need self-care and you need some me time and you need downtime as a mom. You know, that human wisdom will only get you so far, but it will leave you empty. Um, you are not enough. You're not enough of what your kids need. They will deplete you fully if you let them. You know, one of the most amazing moms I know said this week that her, their four-year-old looked at them and said, I hate you. And she's seriously one of the most, like, well-equipped moms, like, trained. She knows what she's doing. And she, you know, still, the kids can, you can disappoint your kids so easy. Like, you can let them down because we, we are human. We are not enough. So there's the bad news. Those are the things that you won't hear on a Mother's Day card. But here's the good news, is that even though we are not enough, we serve the God of more than enough. The God of the impossible is with you. So you can, you can never feel alone, truly alone, because he is with us, that he has given us his spirit. And I believe that God wants to equip us as mummies, especially if you... If you believe, if you have put your faith in Christ, you've been baptized, you've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have what you need to, to parent, to lead, to be in business for all of us. This is the benefit of the Holy Spirit, is that his goal is to draw us deeper into intimacy with Jesus, which will actually refuel us and will equip us to be the parents to the kids that he has entrusted us with. God's power is on you, and he has equipped you. You know, we've all been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in that upper room, hundreds of people experienced um, an encounter or an experience with the Holy Spirit. But then Peter went on to give this explanation, and thousands received the Holy Spirit through this explanation. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. That's us. It's for all who are far off, for whom the Lord our God will call. You know, Peter didn't say you might receive the Holy Spirit. He didn't say we earn the Holy Spirit. He said you will receive it. And the Holy Spirit is a gift for all of us who believe. This is a promise for you and for your children. And parents, we can teach our kids how to listen to the Holy Spirit because they don't get a, a miniature version of the Holy Spirit. And we can you, teach our kids to listen to his leading and his guiding because even when we're not there, we don't have to hover and make sure that our kids never experience you know, questions or doubts or times when they um, are you know, maybe watching TV. They don't need us to stand and say, you shouldn't be watching that. They can listen to the Holy Spirit say, I don't know if I should be watching this. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to help us. And here's the thing. We have all been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, but not all of us receive it. So why do we need the Holy Spirit? Okay, here's two illustrations to help us see the significance. One of the works of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5, it talks about how he produces the fruit of the Spirit or the character qualities of Christ in us as we, uh, as we work in step with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so just a couple of weeks ago, I had a Tupperware container. It wasn't this one, but it, something like this. And I had this project. I had this vision. I wanted a spot cut out of it because I needed it to fit somewhere. And so I used an X-Acto knife and I was like trying really hard to cut the plastic. Like <laughs> I probably tried for a few minutes. And any of you, you probably are thinking I'm totally an idiot. But I was trying because it was what I had at home. And then I just was like, oh my goodness, this is not working. So I ended up asking my brother-in-law who has power tools, be like, can you do this? It took him three seconds, he said. You and he chopped out the chunk, and now I have a thing that works. 
for my project. You know, it was just a silly picture, but how much we try and let the, like, we try and be patient. We try and be self-controlled. We try and keep our temper in check. We try and be kind. But I think if when we're just trying really hard, we are like the exacto knife in the plastic. It's not working. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to produce the fruit of the Spirit in our life. We need his power and his strength. Um, Acts 1.8 says that you would be receive power. I skipped over it earlier. There we go. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling, every, telling people about me everywhere. You know, we need to, sometimes our lives are the way that we tell people about Jesus, by the way we live, by the way we have his character qualities working in and through our life. But we need the Holy Spirit to work through the us. We need to let him produce the fruits of the Spirit. You know, I'm definitely having times when I'm not feeling the peace or the patience or the gentleness. <laughs> it's like, nope. It is not a natural feeling in me, but trying harder is not the answer. It's yielding to the work of the Holy Spirit. It's praying, Holy Spirit, give me the character of Jesus because I don't have it today. I need your power. I need your power. It's not to, and our world's view of power is so manipulative, but the power is really to take an insult without fighting back. The time to listen when you'd rather have me time. It's the power to sacrifice. It's the power to let the character of Jesus work through our life. You know, the truth is, even when we're doing all right, you know, we're good people, we're strong, we're capable, but without the Holy Spirit, we're missing something. At some point, all of us will come to the end of our own strength. And we have the choice to keep trying harder and just burn ourselves out or to yield to the refilling and the fueling of the Holy Spirit, to yield to his work in us. You know, have you ever gone throughout the day and realized that you accidentally put your phone in airplane mode? Have you ever done that? You like come to like halfway through the day and it's like, why? It's so quiet. You go to like pull something out and it's not working or you want to get directions somewhere and it's like location can't be found but then you find out that it's just in airplane mode and they might turn it off and all the messages start coming the ding 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 it's all coming in you know I think sometimes we as believers can live in spiritual airplane mode and our ability to connect with God's spirit is there. It is actually hard. When we've said yes to Jesus, that connection with the Holy Spirit is there. It's hardwired in. But we have the ability to turn it off, to shut it up, or to listen to the sense, uh, turn on our sensitive, sensitivity to the spirit of God. You know, I believe that God has messages that he wants to get through that might save your business or comfort you in the loss of a loved one or breathe life into your tired and weary soul. But if we're in airplane mode, those messages just aren't coming through. We need the Holy Spirit. He is absolutely, completely necessary and essential for us to live this, the Spirit-filled life and mission that He has for us. Galatians 5.25 says, If we live by the Spirit, let us keep step with the Spirit. We need to keep in step. That's getting out of airplane mode and into step with where the Holy Spirit is speaking and leading and producing faith and trust in us. Would you stand? So how do we connect with the Holy Spirit? How do we get out of airplane mode or how do we connect with, with His Spirit for the first time? It starts with believing and trusting in Jesus. And Jesus said, if we ask, he will give us the Holy Spirit. Paul prayed for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but really we need to just receive it, to receive this gift that God has given us. The lines are open. We just need to do our part, to keep in step with the Spirit, to keep in step with His work in us, 
to be filled with that power. And so we're gonna take a moment, we're gonna ask, because that's, it's as simple as asking and then receiving. And so would you pray with me, if this is something that maybe you have never, never received the gift of the Holy Spirit, or maybe you're just recognizing that maybe you're just out of step. So we're gonna pray. Would you say, Father, I need your spirit to fill my life. I need your power to work through me. Help me to be sensitive to your spirit. Help me to be filled with your spirit. I receive the gift of your spirit. And would you lead me to the greater work that you would have me do? To carry on this mission of Jesus, not by my strength, but by yours. And as we keep praying today, I wanna just invite you, if you've never put your faith in Jesus, you might believe in God, you might feel drawn to him, you might feel interested, but Jesus, as I've already talked about today, he came and he lived a perfect life. He sacrificed himself. And then he had the power over death and he rose again. And when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus, he begins to, trans to invite us into his story. He brings us out of our self-focused lives and brings us into his mission and his purpose and the reason he created each and every one of us. And if you're here and you're like, I just don't know where to start. Again, it starts with a prayer. It's a, a prayer of saying, yes to Jesus saying I want what you have done for my life and I'm just going to invite us all to pray this prayer again pray a prayer again together and just to say God I trust you and so when you say with me say I need you Jesus would you make me right with you I recognize my need for you and I put my trust in you. Help me to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope today's message encouraged you. If you want to take your next step in saying yes to Jesus, you can always contact us at cty.lc slash next step or fill out the next step section on the City Life app. It's an honor to play a small part in what God is doing in your life. We look forward to connecting with you soon.